Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Drux Milan Unboxing. I'm Drux Milan, and uh, today we're going to be talking about the show on Saturday evening at Empress Palace in Johannesburg, headlined by uh, our local cruiserweight contender Kevin Lorena against an Albanian by the name of Sefer Seferi. Uh, now, in the beginning, I kind of felt like th about this fight like I felt about last weekend's Tyson Fury Otto Valin fight. It seems like a foregone conclusion. But then the cut and Valin made that fight interesting, so we never, we will never know what we may see on Saturday night. Now uh, Kevin Arena, twenty three and one, he's in everybody's top six cruiserweights, all the independent non-sanctioning body rankings. So he's a legit world title contender. No amateur records done very well for himself to be at this point. Um, he's staying active. It's his third fight this year. Um, he came back from a sol shoulder surgery, looked very impressive, stopping unbeaten 14-0 prospect Arthur Mann. His fight after that was a bit disappointing, another undefeated but 7-0-1 uh, um, inexperienced guy, Vassal Dukar, managed to last the distance. He says he uh, had the flu beforehand. Now let's see what he does uh, on Saturday night. His opponent, Sefer Seferi, uh, a lot of groans around him because a lot of people remember his performance against Tyson Fury. Now, I think for a moment we must take the Tyson Fury fight and just throw it aside because he was way outgunned. He was fighting a huge heavyweight. Not many cruiserweights will really compete against a guy like Tyson Fury. You're going to have to be Alexander Usyk or Ivan Holyfield, that type of talent uh, cruiserweight. And uh, he, it was a non-performance. He retired after four rounds in his corner. And that is one of only two losses he's got. He's got a 23-2-1 uh, record. Now, the other loss was also at heavyweight against a big grader who had a in-between WBA belt at the time, Manuel Char. He lost a competitive decision. And uh, as a promotion for a fight says, he has never lost at cruiserweight. Now, he's also got 20 no 21 knockouts in those 23 wins. So, on paper, he looks like he's a knockout puncher. Easy. Um, I think no. Um, if we look at his record more closely, all the guys he's fought at Cruiserweight have been uh, journeyman types. Uh, it's only a few guys who have uh, winning records. By winning records, I mean they have won more fights than they have lost. And even so, a lot of them have double-digit losses. So he hasn't really fought anybody at Cruiserweight. So that's the kind of opponents that will give you a high knockout ratio. Now, if I look at his last fight, this is one well-known opponent at Cruiserweight. He fought to a draw with ex-WBA champion, uh, also a softball like Kevin Arena, Firat Arslan. Now we know Arslan is a tough customer, but uh, even though Seferi is already 40, Arslan is 48. Okay, he's not your normal 48 year old, he's a tough, strong, muscular kind of guy. And I, and I, and I saw that 12 rounds he did with Firat Arslan. Now Sefer Seferi, basically he's busy, he's got a high work rate. He keeps on throwing and throwing and throwing. Yeah? So he throws uh, combination punches. But what I don't like about him are two things. Um, he pushes his punches. So that's why I think his knockout ratio is inflated. He doesn't put his weight around it. His technique is not great. He basically throws a lot of arm punches. So he looks busy. Now and then, Lorena might have to watch out for it. Not get complacent and stand there too long. Because now and then he sneaks in a decent uppercut. In between all those pity patty arm punches kind of thing. So he's not a great puncher. And then I noticed every punch that uh, Pirat Ashlan threw, jab, southpaw, straight, left, hook, he hits uh, Seferi with. But Ashlan at 48, he can only put together two or three punches. That's it. So uh, Kevin Arena, if he steps on the gas, because he's got those snappy combinations, not a great knockout ratio, but he does have those really snappy, explosive combinations. The chalk would say that uh, Kevin Arena wins by a wide, unanimous decision. My feeling after watching Seferi, uh, Lorena needs to make a statement against this sort of opponent. He needs to go and knock him out and stop him. And I think if he steps on the gas, he's not going to have trouble hitting Seferi. And Seferi, I don't think, has the, trouble, uh, has, uh, has the power to uh, 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 trouble Lorena, despite this uh, uh, 21 knockouts and 23 fights, I think is inflated. So I, I don't think he can trouble Kevin Lorena in any way. So I would say Lorena needs to go for the stoppage here. And I predict... He's, gonna, he's going to get it. I think he's going to take Seferi out there in about seven rounds or so. So that is it for Kevin Arena and Sefer Seferi. Um, 
should you go and see that card of golden gloves if you're on the Joburg area, um, seeing that we have such a strong favourite in the main event? Um, I would say definitely yes, because uh, there is a very, very good fight on the undercard between two undefeated junior welterweights. But one is Marius Matamba, he's, a, he's from the DRC originally, he was based here in Cape Town, he now trains over Smiths. Big puncher, lots of knockouts in his record. And he's for decent opposition. It's guys, it's guys that gave him a go. And uh, I think his power is for real. He can hit. And he's up against Sebastian Rothman's fighter, Jabulani Mackenzie. Eight and old O has also fought some decent guys in his short career. So it's a classical confrontation between the puncher, who's got the power, that's Matamba, and then the uh, boxer, who's got this hand speed fleet of foot. He beat uh, Mike McQuenna in his last fight. He's a mover and he's a boxer, and uh, anything can happen in that fight. It's a 50-50 fight. Some people say Matamba is going to win by knockout. Others say Mackenzie is going to outpoint him. Uh, it's 50-50. If I have to put my head on a block, I kind of lean towards Mackenzie to prevail. Uh, I always favor a boxer over a puncher. That's my bias, maybe. But uh, that's a fight that's really worthwhile. And also on the card is Keaton Gomes. Undefeated 6 0 prospect, he's taking on 6 and 1 Lebo Moshatua. And uh, Moshatua, he's a kind of guy, I saw him against Chris Thompson, he lost the decision there. But you have a feeling he has got talent and that can actually do something um, if he is properly conditioned and uh, not uh, undersized and lets his hands go. So I think he's going to give Keaton Gomes something to think about so that's also a good fight and brian uh, brian mitchell's prospect that he manages aiden uh, aiden quinn also here from my neck of the woods he also be fighting so it's a really solid undercard perhaps seferi does a well in and uh, makes it a more interesting night and uh, uh fights a bit better than when he looked against uh uh fury definitely or against arslan um let's see what happens now there's a lot of things about kevin arena um, he was going to go for an IBF eliminator in Russia. Eventually, that didn't happen. Uh, he got some criticism, criticism for, 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 from, for it uh, from certain circles. Now, the reason that he says why they didn't go is because, number one, it is in Russia. Number two, it was for less money uh, than he's used to getting at home. Now, a lot of people saying, but look at uh, Ilunga Jr. Makavu. He went to Russia twice. Dangerous fighters. He came, came home a winner twice. But Lorena is not Makabu. Makabu is going to knock you out. He's a dangerous puncher or he's going to knock you down a couple of times, which will let you, will, be, will make you go over on the judges' scorecards a bit better. Um, but even in his last fight that he won, it was a close majority decision, which I thought was rather close. And one of, one of those knockdowns, I think, was a knockdown in that fight that he had with Papin. And if it wasn't for a last round knockout, he would have gotten himself wrong. So... Lorena is not the puncher that Makabu is, so I can understand the reluctance that they would have to go to Russia and then if it's for his money. Now the other criticism is, but his promoter, which is uh, Golden Gloves, Rodney Berman, uh, can put up the money, they have deep pockets, that's speculation, I don't know what his bank account's like, but I think he does, uh, to, they can put up the money and bring the fight over here to South Africa. Yes, they could. And of course, we're looking at this great show coming next weekend by Rambo Africa Promotions of Azinga Puzile and Shafkat Rakimov, who are bringing this fight here. But I wonder if they're making profit on that one fight. You know, they're not going to make it from the attendance in the Orient Theatre. The venue is too small when they have sponsors. My, my, my calculated guess would be that they're breaking even on this fight and they're investing in Puzile's feature, the future. They get to recoup that money later, which is a common practice in boxing. Now, uh, if, if, if Golden Gloves were to bring the IBF Eliminator over here to South Africa, they, they, they will effectively be investing in, in Lorena's future. They'll be gambling. They'll pay back somewhere in the future. That's what I would assume. It's my, spe my calculated speculative assessment. And uh, I think at this stage, Golden Gloves, Rodney Berman, his legacy is intact for what he's accomplished in the past in South African boxing. He'll go down as one of our great promoters, if not the greatest South African promoter. And I, 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 I get the feeling there's not like a second generation, a son or a daughter that's going on with a business. And he's 70 odd years. So I, I think he's probably more in it now for the fight by fight, medium term, long term. And that could be one of the reasons why Kevin Lorena's IBF Eliminator 
isn't happening here and why he's going a different route, then we have to look at the big picture at Cruiserweights. Now, Lorena could stay here, become a kind of a Brian Nielsen, that Danish heavyweight that eventually fought Mike Tyson, fight uh, here locally against whomever, continue to build the record and earn good paydays. He could do that, but I don't think he's that kind of guy. I've never met him, but he doesn't, it, that's not the vibe you get from him. He seems very calculated, business-like, very ambitious. He wants to be a unified champion at Cruiserweight, and he wants to have a crack at heavyweight. So I think they, they might have a plan B that, 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 that a lot of the people here yeah, talking about these, these issues don't know about. Uh, so the, the end of a, of, a, of a super series where Maurice Breeders against uh, uh, Junior Dortikos. Dortikos got the IBF, Breeders has got the WBO and the vacant WBC belt will be on the line. So that temporarily ties up those belts, not necessarily permanently. The winner is supposed to fight Christoph Glo uh, uh, Glowaski after that controversy between these fights with breeders, but that's not to say that the winner is necessarily going to do that. They might just dump the WBC belt or one of the others and then it is vacant. But the WBA belt remains vacant. Uh, Lawrence Acoli is highly rated there. I'm thinking in the future, while he's keeping busy here, yeah, at least he is keeping busy and he is winning, that's possibly they'll steer Kevin Arena towards the WBA title. That's that's the way I would think if I was uh, promoting or managing him, but who knows? So guys, that's my uh, two cents worth on the Saturday. We're going to have a very, very busy weekend next weekend and things happening in the Eastern Cape and also internationally with Porter and Spence. But until we see each other again, please hit the subscribe button. Please leave comments. Um, um, let me know what you think about what I've, what I've just said. What do you think about Saturday's card at uh, Emperor's Palace? What is your feeling? Where is Kevin Lorena going to go in the future? And, uh, and, and please like and subscribe and share on social media of all your friends. You can also catch me in Ring Magazine. I'm a South African correspondent for them. And until we see each other again, please keep those hands up.